Hey, hey, good morning. Welcome back. Round two this week. I am sore <laughs> from yesterday. Oh, my butt hurts so bad. Um, it's good to be back. It's good to be back, but my goodness. It's like, what? What's it been, two weeks? What the heck? How was I like a machine two weeks ago and then like, you know, two weeks off? How did I run? How did I trek? 85 miles through the San Juan Mountains and then my little piddly workout yesterday so I crushed my butt. Are you feeling it, buddy? Probably not. You're too hardcore. And can I just say, okay, this is a big deal for me. Some of you know this. I'm working out in a bra top today. I It's so hot. But, you know, this is something that I never thought I'd ever do, <laughs> ever in my entire life. And I'm embracing it now. And it's a big deal for me. It's a big deal for me to work out in a bra top. So I just want to say that. And I want to, you know, say it's half confidence and half acceptance, right? Confidence to own it, right? And, and, acceptance of what it is you know like it is what it is you know nobody's body is perfect right and accepting hey my body is my body and my body can do amazing things amazing things my body traversed 85 miles at altitude up and down 28,000 feet of elevation like in a in an area of the world that you just can't see without getting there on your feet, right? And my body took me there. My, my body physically was able to take me to places, oh, just saying it that way is such a cool thing, right? Like, what can you, what can your body do for you? Um, first ask, what can you do for your body? What's that uh, JFK? Ask not what you can do, what your country can do for you, but what can you do for your country? Ask not what your body will do for you. Ask what your body, you can do for your body. Right? <clears throat> what can you do for your body? You can move it. You can do yoga, which I did not do yesterday, and I did not do this morning, and I really need to do that after this workout. Um, you can fuel it with good, proper, nutritional food, not the crap that we're surrounded by. Like, you know, I partly don't blame us because it's like, it's everywhere, right? Like, it is... Um, one of my newest client um, who was away with me this weekend, this past weekend, said to me, like, I brought containers, I went grocery shopping, I went to get food, and I ended up just eating out all weekend um, because it's, I couldn't, I couldn't resist, it's there. But, you know, I was thinking this yesterday, how quickly habits form, and they, they go just as quickly. But, like, for example, um, the five day drop is a great example of it. It's five days. And what I've kind of observed coming out of that program is people taking habits that they, they had in, in, in five days, those habits are now habits that they sort of stick to. I wouldn't, I would not have thought so, right? Like when you look at how hard it is to build a habit, a new habit for people, um, you know, getting up early, having that glass of water, or like, People commit to something for five days and those habits stick after the five days, which is why the success rate of that program is through the roof in terms of weight loss maintenance because it's like, it's like you're all in, I guess, for five days versus being kind of in for 90 days, so to speak, right? Like, so think about when you normally would take on a new program, whether it's um, nutrition or weight, or sorry, nutrition based, or exercise based. Like, how long does it take you to get in the habit of going to the gym or working out, right? Like so long, but yet if you commit for five days to walk every morning, I bet you in that sixth day, you're going out for a walk that morning. It, it doesn't take long to build a habit. You know, conversely, <laughs> it does not take long to lose a habit, right? So I was done for I don't know, the minute that you go on vacation, right, like you're, you're outside of your environment, 
you know, you have a new set of circumstances around you, you have a new set of, you know, stimulants kind of thing in terms of, um, you know, what your routine is and, and whatever. Um, everything starts, like, you forget what you do every day, right? Because you don't have the triggers, the ha habitual triggers. And, you know, you go on vacation and, you know, what you do the first day sticks. So if you get up and go for a walk the first day, if I get up and I go for a run, if I get up and make, you know, my breakfast, I do it the next day too, without even thinking. So it's just funny. So it's almost like you got to take that. You got to take one day and establish a routine. And it takes probably two by day three, that routine is now, it's now routine. Um, anyways, I don't know what my point of <laughs> that, all that, oh, because, you know, when you travel, you have routines. You know, how many of you, like, you go on a baseball tournament, or you're going to a hockey tournament, or you travel to the cottage, you have specific places where you stop for gas. You have, you know, you're like, you get ice cream one time on the way up to the cottage, you're getting ice cream the next time on the way up to the cottage. Um, you stop for coffee, you stop, stop for tins. You know, the, these patterns. So, like, when you're traveling, you have patterns. You know, people are like, well, I can't stick to my diet when I'm traveling. You know, you make your new pattern, you go to Aldi, <laughs> you get your groceries, and you establish a new pattern, boom. It's just as easy as eating out, I guarantee you. You know, my secret weapon, honestly, to make it that much easier, is Pampered Chef sells these micro cookers, I think they're called. Um, and basically, you can cook veggies. I, I cook my eggs, and I use it as a dish. So it's super multifaceted um, in the microwave. So I get up in the morning, you know, instead of going to the breakfast bar and hoping that they have something for me to eat, you know, I pick up, a, I pick up some eggs, some egg whites, I make them in some kale, make it in the microwave. Um, super simple. I traveled for three weeks, I mean, all over the place like on planes even, so I couldn't take all my stuff with me. I took my micro cooker, I took my mini kettle, I took my fork, and you know, I had to go gro grocery shopping. I had to go to get some, some food. But I stuck to, I probably ate better. <laughs> and all, like, I didn't have a scale with me when I was away, but I was really curious. I know my friend Kathleen who traveled with me, she said she lost weight, <laughs> she got back, and we ate a lot, but we were eating all really simple good foods. So you can eat well, it's a matter of establishing a new habit, and I would say the other piece is getting addicted to feeling good. Because when you're addicted to feeling good, you know, the only exception when I can eat garbage is right after an event. Like, I, I definitely indulged, but it was a couple days later. Um, I came off the course Saturday night, just under 40 hours I had been out there. And all I wanted was like good food, like food. I think I ate, we, we had to drive. Oh, where I came off course was literally in the middle of nowhere, like literally not a town anywhere nearby so we had to drive to get to the closest town to stay the night um, and we had bread and I had my tuna packets that's my other ninja tip for traveling is you buy they're easier to find in the states so next time you're at Target or you know Aldi is better they're 75 cents <coughs> if you can eat tuna you can actually get chicken as well um, and they, they don't perish, right? So I had tuna, I had a tuna olive sandwich. It was delicious. Sounds gross. When you've done 85 miles in the backcountry, your taste buds are happy to eat anything. Uh, but anyways, like for the, it wasn't until Monday night that I had Chick-fil-A. And my body was still obviously hardcore in recovery mode because what I've found in the past is I can consume pretty much anything 
those first couple days and my body just devours it. Doesn't care, it could be alcohol. I mean, I used to joke, like I could drink like, you know, a frat boy <sighs> right after a 100 miler. Makes no sense. You think your body is super depleted and, you know, unable to, like would really respond poorly, but it just like devours anything you give it. So I had Chick-fil-A the one night. I mean, I had 15,000 calories to make back from that event. <laughs> um, but then the, a few days later, I was somewhat recovered. We went to the Outback. And I had some cheesy fries. We, we ordered them as an appetizer for the table, and I had a few. Oh my god, my stomach revolted. Probably the cheese. I just haven't had cheese. <coughs> um, I haven't really eaten cheese much since I started the Best Meat program. So I don't know. I don't know that my body really likes cheese anymore, which is sad because I do, I do like cheese. But anyway, um, <coughs> it, 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 I, I felt like I had some serious stomach issues right after that. So it's like, yeah, not really worth it. All right, I'm going to try to go light again today because obviously uh, I'm getting back into the swing of things with uh, in the gym, but I am so excited to be back, you guys. I am so hungry for this 200 in September. You know, failure can definitely increase your motivation or determination. I told you guys yesterday, like, I want to be. Get, I want to get better at being like a fighter versus an endurer. Um, that was my revelation with all of this. So, um, is is I really want to get. So what we're going to do is we're going to be bent over and we're going to alternate pulling rows. This is going to be super fun on my sore butt. <laughs> <coughs> but we're going to do it anyway. My butt will live on. Is anyone else sore or is it just me? I don't know. Doesn't matter. And I gotta get a fan for in here. I was on Amazon yesterday looking at fans. And um, they have fans that provide air conditioning. So I'm tempted to get one of those because I would definitely welcome some air conditioning in here. We're talking about um, kind of fixing the gym up and renting out the space to people, um, an idea that I had. Okay, so same position. I want you to really squeeze at the top, but make sure that belly button's pulled in and your butt is almost like cocked. Like, so think, if you want to elongate this, both the spine and the hamstrings, Okay, so that's what we're alternating back and forth between. Yeah, I have some big plans for this space. Um, so I'd like to get an air, you know, a, a proper, a fan would be okay, but even better would be some cool air. <laughs> would be, I would be okay with that. And then I gotta get a good heater for the winter. squeezing, not squeezing, but um, flexing. <coughs> the back. So flexing at the top. I'm already feeling these. And we're only two rounds in. <coughs> we're going to do upper, upper body and core today. Tomorrow, um, 
Well, I'm on the road again tonight. So probably no class tomorrow. Um, and next week should be back to normal again. I was, Grayson, my, my son has uh, like a college showcase, college visit tomorrow in Pennsylvania. And it starts at nine. So I probably won't really be able to squeeze one in in the morning. I'm really focused on good quality sleep still. So, but I'm sleeping, I'm still up at 6.30 every morning, and I slept really well every night. Yeah, so my September event, I'm just, I'm fired up for redemption. <laughs> And I don't even like calling it reduction because reduction sounds like I feel or I messed up. I really try not to look at it that way. I'm just kind of looking at it like it wasn't my day out there. And it was bigger than me. And I haven't told my husband yet, but I want to put my name back in to the lottery for next year. I won't get in. I mean, the, the, the fact that I got in once is, I may never get in again, but I certainly think it'll take a few years. Had I been able to finish, I would have gone into what's called the finisher's bracket, and I would have been pulled from that pool. Although in a way, I almost think it's harder to get in that way. I think it's I think you have a chance as a female right now to get into hard rock. So my big foot qualifier is good for another year. Okay, we're gonna do chest now. So we did back, so we're gonna be on the ground. And we're gonna, I'm gonna give you a couple options. You can do loop or you can just do like this. And we're gonna alternate with flies. So I'm gonna start with these. And my flies will, I'll try my flies with those as well. I, I don't necessarily want to go next year. I just want to make sure I get my name in the lottery for another year so that that counts. And then I can run another qualifier at some point. I don't think my Divide 200 is a qualifier. The Tahoe 200 just ended. I really want to do that one. But I can't, I just don't have the money. Squeezing. To sign up for that right now. I'm still paying for my trip out west to do the divide, so. Okay, and then we're going to flies. But can be up or down. I might alternate. I was talking to somebody this morning um, about how strength training builds your body up. And it's like most of what we do in life breaks our body down, right? Running breaks my body down. Climbing mountains breaks my body down. Life breaks our body down. Sitting, um, the way we eat, the, our lifestyle, it breaks our body down. It's like wear and tear in our body, <coughs> right? It's like driving your vehicle is wear and tear. Um, strength training builds your body back up. 
So strength training is, is what's going to build your body into a strong, healthy machine that can endure, like I was talking about yesterday, endure like the challenges of life, right? Whether that's self, you know, inflicted challenges like running, running a half marathon, running a 5K, running a um, hundred or two hundred miles. Like strength training is what gives you the durability to do to do life. Ooh, that's a good line. Strength training gives you the durability to do life. Um, you know, all the things that we, we struggle with physically on a day-to-day -day basis, whether it's back pain, plantar fasciitis, um, they all boil down to the, you know, our maintenance program. That is another good line. Man, full of them today. And most of us don't have a maintenance program. We, you know, imagine just driving your car through life and never ever taking it for an oil change, never ever getting the brakes done, never ever putting gas in it, um, and then like wondering why it's like always sputtering and breaking down on the side of the road. Like that's what we do to our bodies. You know, and it's like, you, you don't have to necessarily have aspirations to you know, like, okay, you pick a car that you're going to drive. Maybe you're driving a minivan, and all you want to do is get your kids to their sports, get yourself to work and back, right? Um, be able to take the odd vacation that fits your whole family in the vehicle, unlike us. <laughs> maybe that's your demand, right? Or maybe you're like, no, man, I want to go... I want to drive down every back road and see every remote view that I can. <coughs> you need a different machine to do that, right? Like you need four by four, you need off-roading options, you need, you know, snow tires and chains, and like you need a, you know, so you customize your maintenance program to suit, you know, what kind of life do you want to live? And, and that's what, but at the end of the day, ultimately the very least that you have to do is to put the gas in the car. And most of us fail at that, right? Like most of us are doing a miserable job of the fuel that we're putting into our machine and we're driving it anyway. If you want to live life fully, like you want to, you know, you want to climb the mountains in Lake Placid, you want to climb the mountains in Mont Tremblant, you want to, you want to like see the canyons in Arizona, like I'm referring to my <laughs> retreat, you want to Go down in the Grand Canyon and experience it. Like you want to climb Mount Washington. <coughs> right? You gotta you gotta take care of your vehicle. You gotta build, first of all, you gotta build a different vehicle. <coughs> oh my god, listen to me coughing and spewing, right? I am taking care of my vehicle. Sleep. Food, strength training, and then I would say some mobility stuff on the side. But strength training, the proper strategic strength training will give you an awful lot of mobility options. Okay, we're going to go to some bicep curls and tricep extensions. Um, yeah, I mean, that's the end of that sentence. That's what we're going to do. <laughs> Kind of a simple, simple set, but oh my triceps hurt so bad in my race. Can you tell you? Like literally hurt to touch. Um, I'm assuming it was for from the my pools. Um, I use those suckers big time. Okay, so bicep curls. So one, two, three, down. No, up. One, two. Up, one, two, three. Up, one, two, three. Okay, and then we're going to try some extensions. Uh, I'm getting aggressive here, I gotta wait. So up, one, two, three. Up, one, two, three. My focus since my since coming off the course has been food and sleep. 
food and sleep, food and sleep. So I've done pretty good in that regard. I've failed a bit, <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, when it comes to um, you know, self-care, more self-care type stuff. So I gotta get on top of that. Next week, I think I get back to my normal routine of running in the morning. I haven't run yet. <laughs> this weather is not really <coughs> making me excited to run, I'm not gonna lie. I'm not a fan of the humidity. Um, but here's the thing, like, this is why I kind of got on this tangent, is like, you can be training in the gym, you can be strength training, and you can be bu building your body back up while your body's recovering. Like, that's kind of the way I look at strength training. It's like, you can actually heal and, and move forward at the same time, which is, you know, running is gonna break down a body that's already, you know, in disrepair kind of thing. And so, it's, it's interesting. And I'd rather get right back in the gym and start my strength training than, than force my body out to run. I did hike. And I'm going for a hike slash run Friday. I'm gonna go out and just see what my body wants to do. <coughs> I have like eight weeks between events, I guess, like two weeks through July. Um, you know, four weeks of August, two weeks of September, so but about eight weeks. The training, for the most part, is in, in the bag, right? But two weeks of recovery <coughs> was, was my plan. A week or so of tapering or rest before the event, that gives me four or five week block to actually do some training. So I have to decide, I haven't figured out yet what I want to focus on other than definitely mindset stuff. Um, I'm, kind of, I'm kind of lost as to what I want to do. It'll come to me though, it always does. I feel like training is partly intuition for me. One thing I am going to do is I'm going to eat a lot over the next few weeks in terms of while I'm on the trail, like I am going to eat my face off and train my body <laughs> to eat out there. Because <clears throat> there's two solutions, two viable solutions out there that can solve almost every problem. And I think it's sleep and I think it's food. <clears throat> I didn't have time to sleep really and I couldn't, so I couldn't sleep enough. <laughs> 